what's up guys it's a nice day water's flat hopefully get lucky today shoot some coles let's do it first drop of the day let me start off by saying that this water was unnaturally flat and clear normally it's not like that trust me so as soon as I jump in I drop my buoy down to the bottom my anchor and there's already some coles so boom one in the bag good way to start yellow-eyed cole the baking of the sea I had just bought this spear the day before, so I'm still trying to get it figured out and find the range. So as you can see, that's why I whiffed this Kole twice before I finally get him. Lucky for me, Koles aren't the smartest and they don't always run away, so you get multiple tries at shooting them. What I like about the three prong is a fast reload time. Here I miss, immediately reload, and I'm able to get the same fish. If I had been using a spear gun, it would have took me at least 30 seconds to reload. By then, the fish would have been long gone. So I'm gonna secure my catch with a kui. A kui is a long needle connected to cable, which is connected to our buoy. So now that I got a few kole, I'm going to start looking for a fish called a hole hole. They like to live in between boulders and cracks in the reef. They're a really good eating fish. People like to fry them crispy. They're also caught in shallow water by throw net fishermen. Alright, so there's two different ways to approach shooting these kind of fish. You can either drop down and slowly creep up to them, or you can do a dive bomb technique. Dive bombing is good for people like me who can't hold their breath very long. You basically just drop from the top right over the fish. And yeah, this place has a lot of turtles trying to bite us all day. Do they know we're in danger too? There's only one of me. Anyway. Little shish kebab action on this kole. So here's another dive bomb for all you small lunged players out there like me. So you're gonna drop down, be as stealthy and quiet as possible. I think I was going for this kole, but Mr. Ahole Hole crosses my path and he meets the real steel. Kole are mostly out in the open, but sometimes they'll hide. So here I seen his yellow eye peeking up in between these two rocks. So I aim right in between and I got him. So on this drop, I'm trying to get two Kole's at the same time. For some of you that might be easy, but I can hold my breath like 15 seconds. So that's pretty impressive for me. So I shoot the first one, take him off, go for the second one, completely whiff, right on. I'm gonna get one before this dive is over, trust me. So ideally, you wanna shoot your fish like this with the three prong. You get three prongs right in the center of the body or in the head. You know for sure that's not gonna come off. So this drop is not a dive bomb. This is more of the creep up technique. So I go from a little far away, sit at the bottom, grunt a little bit. When the fish comes in to me, I meet it halfway and I get a good shot. Sometimes you go for one fish, but you end up hitting two at the same time. I was just going for this kole, but I end up hitting this little munu in the back. He gets away, he'll be all right.
All right, guys, I can feel it. This is the drop. I'm going to get two collars at the same time. I can feel it. So I drop down behind a rock. The first collar comes in. I get a good shot. Take that guy off. Here comes number two. You ready? Wow. Maybe in the next life. At least I got one. This little turtle had a hook and a line stuck in his mouth. Poor guy. So I don't normally eat this fish, but my uncle really likes it, so I shot one for him. This fish is called Pakui Kui. The old timers call it Japan flag because the orange flag on the tail resembles the sun on the Japanese flag. So as you can see, this area has a lot of boulders and cracks. Perfect spot for a hole hole. Sometimes you just gotta sit and wait and they'll come out. These fish are really soft, so if you don't shoot them well, they're gonna rip off. Starting to get some nice variety here. More than enough to give to my family and neighbors and friends. I like to give away fish to friends and family that love eating fish, but either they don't dive or they're elderly kupuna that can't dive anymore. When you get a good catch, you share it with as many people as you can. That's the local way. The thing I like about this spot in particular, there's a lot of variety. So here I'm going down for, I'm pretty sure, hole hole in the crack. So I miss, reload, I turn to my right, and there's a kole right there. There's also some veke and some other fish, but I'm just happy to get the kole. So right here, I saved my dive buddy's life. He's at the bottom and a kole viciously tries to attack him from the back. I go down and I save his life by shooting the kole. So noble of me. I think the dive god saw my good deed and they rewarded me. So I go down, I shoot the first kole. As you can see, they're very curious fish and hang around. So I take off the first one, aim, and I get the two for one special, baby. So your ideal shot would be to shoot the fish mid-body or in the head and have them stuck on the prongs. Sometimes you barely graze him, so you need to go down and grab the fish so it doesn't get away. So here's another dive bomb. I go down, barely graze him because I forgot my glasses at home, but he sticks around long enough for me to get a good second shot. This time he's not getting away. On this dive, there were thousands of manini all around us. This is what they mean by the term safety in numbers. There's so many, I can't even choose one to shoot at. So I end up missing that one. And they tend to come back if you wait around. So I waited and I missed another one. But on this drop, I knew I was gonna get one. There you go. At this point, we had enough fish, so we decided to go look for some taco. This guy was just sunbathing, cruising with a moana. So when I poke the taco, I don't like to stab them through their body with my spear. I like to just gently prod them out so I can see how big they are. That way, if they're small and I let them go, they're unharmed. This taco was about a pound. I probably could have kept it, but I decided to let them go. If you want to see them grow, you gotta let them go. We actually saw a lot of taco this day. They weren't the biggest, probably because it's not season anymore, but it's just good to see the abundance of them in this area. See now this taco, that's a keeper size, like a couple pounds at least.
This was an incredible day of diving for us. We got fish, we got taco, the weather was nice, the water was nice. Can't ask for much more than that. Now it's time to go home. Alright guys, it is Gyotaku time. For those of you who are new here, Gyotaku is a Japanese fish printing art form that uses real fish to create one-of-a-kind impressions. For this Gyotaku, I'm going to mainly focus on printing the yellow-eyed kole. I decided to make this a multi-fish print, so I'm going to print this fish more than once. Many people, myself included, have a hard time deciding whether they like the traditional or modern styles of Gyotaku. This is a traditional print, raw and untouched. So for this piece, I chose to blend both of them. It features the modern, refined style of Gyotaku living in harmony with the traditional style. My vision was to show the koles in their natural habitat, eating algae or seaweed off a rock. And the best part about Gyotaku, nothing is ever wasted. Watch this. Just the bacon of the sea, people. Yellow-eyed kole. There's another species called king kole that doesn't have a yellow eye that gets bigger, but these are way better tasting. All right, so when you're cleaning these guys, these kind of tangs and surgeon fish, they have this blade on both sides of your tail. You don't want to be cooking this and swallowing this. It's really sharp. So make sure you remove these. So the first thing we're going to do, get rid of those. Just slide your, the fat part of your knife under it and it'll come right off. So when I clean these, I like to cut from the stomach up to the mouth. And I also like to cut the gills this way because it makes it easier to butterfly open to clean it. The colas here in Hilo, they tend to be really fatty. I've had yellow-eyed colas from other parts of the island and they're not as, they don't have as much fat content. Normally you find them in like boulder kind of areas or um, areas with like cracks in the reef. That's where they normally hang out. They hang out in pretty large schools. Can you catch them from pole? No, they don't bite. They don't bite pole. So the only way to get these guys is three prong spear fishing. Bones and fins and heads. These are some of the best eating parts about the pole, to be honest. So we're gonna deep fry these and we're still gonna eat them. This is actually my favorite part to be honest. Cause if you guys are like us, you know, we've been fishing and diving and all that a long time. And eventually you run out of ideas of ways to prepare your catch. So we're showing you always something different. So we're just going to cut them in little smaller pieces. So when we bake it with a pot pie, all the flavors can mesh together. Koli are one of those fish where the skin is like really soft. It's not like thick and rubbery like uh, hage or other kind of fish. Today, we are making kole pot pie with a ulu mash. Ulu is a breadfruit. So to get started, we're going to throw this on the fire on the charcoal and cook it. Let's do it. There's some pigs back there. That's gonna be on our next episode. <laughs> All right. 
right, so we're gonna use this knife to cut, cut this ulo in half, and then we're gonna spoon the meat out. There we go. Look at that. Slowly spoon it out without getting all the burnt skin inside of inside of our ulu mash. Da da dun da da dun dun da da dun. Yeah. We're gonna cut up this onion. And this is just a rough dice. It doesn't need to be perfect. We got some beautiful Hamakua oyster mushrooms. I'm gonna add these mushrooms to the mash. So we're gonna add some butter to the mash. Not only because butter is awesome and it tastes great, but we wanna add some moisture to the mash so it doesn't dry out when we're baking it. One good heaping, you know what, one and a half. Can't go wrong with butter, right? I'm gonna add some garlic salt. Some black pepper. Pointers. The bone and the fins and the kole head, that's some of the best eating parts. So we're not going to waste it, we're going to fry it crispy. While we're waiting for the koles, little jam sesh. We got our kole pieces here that we cut up. I'm gonna throw this in the fryer for a little bit, just to give it a little crisp to it, and then we're gonna throw it in our ulu mash. Let's do it. Always away. We still want a nice flaky texture of the kole and that butteriness that you get in your kole. So we don't want to fry fry like how we usually do koles. So we're gonna already take it out. Like I said, it's gonna be like almost like a flat fry. And Now we're gonna add a little bit of smoked mozzarella cheese. Can't go wrong with that. The way we made the ulu on the fire, it gave the ulu like a nice smoke flavor. So we, we're gonna stick to that theme and that's why we chose this smoked mozzarella cheese. Be very gentle with it. Mix around the ulu mash with the fish and the cheese. Now we're gonna spoon our mixture into the pie shell. I'm gonna add some chives onto the top just to give that garnishing look and it's gonna add a nice flavor to it too, refreshing. We got our beautiful pot pie and we're gonna put it in the oven for maybe 20 25 minutes. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. oh yeah. the crust is nice and golden. Look at that. So we're just gonna bring it out a little. Gonna grate some cheese on top. That's the good stuff. Lots of it, lots of it. So we're gonna pop that back in the oven, let the cheese melt.
Call it pot pie. Just cut her up. Let's cut her up. Oh, that is cross. Oh, that's what you call a slice right there. All right, taste time. Here's our Kole pot pie. <laughs> it's kind of pretty, like, the pressure is actually good. <laughs> lie. Like, I would tell you this was shitty, but it's actually good. It's actually like the ooh holds like a creaminess. Like, it didn't get dried out. You know, it is creaminess. It's real creamy. Like, watch. Watch trying to break into it. Like, you'll get to see how creamy it is. Yeah. Like, look at that. It's still moist. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I'm amazed. That is a total surprise. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> this actually came out. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. This has been our Kole Pot Pie episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.